esta noche. Está pactado a ocho rounds en la división de peso super ligero. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for our main event of the evening. Eight rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division. Presented by Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. Tecate, the official beer of boxing. En Casa Mexico Tequila, it's in the taste. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces, Carla Kais, Rudy Barragan, y Jerry Cantu. And when the action begins inside the ring, el tercero en la superficie, referee Hall of Famer, Jack Reese. Ahora bien, damas y caballeros que nos siguen a través de la señal de Estrella TV y los presentes desde la tradición boxística, el Teatro Velasco, desde el centro de Los Ángeles, California, Estados Unidos. Live from the boxing tradition, the Velasco Theater in downtown LA, California, USA. Ajusten su cinturones. Introducing to you first, the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing black and gold. He officially weighs in at 139.6 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina de Cate Azul, vistiendo pantaloncillo negro con oro, con un peso oficial de 139.6 libras. As a professional, he stands with a record of 22 victories against three losses and 11 of his victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 22 victorias, 3 derrotas y 11 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. El orgullo de Santa Ana, California. Jesse Roma. His opponent across the ring is standing in the red corner wearing white and black. He officially weighed 139.8 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina Tecate Roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo blanco con negro, con un peso de 139.8 libras. As a professional, he stands with a record of 17 victories against two losses and eight of his victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 17 victorias, dos derrotas y ocho de esas victorias por la vía del knockout de Norwalk, California. El Javi. Final instructions con las indicaciones finales. Jack Reese. These are good. These are right at the line. I'm going to let them work in here. I gave you guys both instructions. I just want to remind you please listen. Follow my directions at all times. Fight hard, fight clean. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck. Jack Reese, third man in the ring. Let's look at the tail of the tape for our main event tonight. These guys match up very well. Roman is just one year younger. He's a half inch taller. Javier Molina has a very slight reach advantage. One inch. We are underway. Javier Molina going old school black and white. Jesse Roman, black and gold. These two know each other from the amateurs. They know each other from the Southern California boxing scene. As they even sparred a few times years ago. But it's different now as they're professionals. And the look of Javier Molina, a man who is now locked in and focused. It's amazing when you dedicate yourself fully to the sport of boxing, bro. His hands look faster than I'm used to seeing them. And I've never seen his body this slim looking. Sometimes that can be a bad thing. Sometimes light is right, sometimes light ain't right for a, a prize fighter. It, it depends on the stage of his career and, and how old he, he or she is. Um, so we'll see, I mean, we'll find out as this fight progresses whether or not coming down in weight was a good thing for Molina at this stage of his career. Molina said at 147, he felt good, but he could tell guys were just bigger, especially on the second day after the weigh-ins. 
on the clash of hands. And he knew he had to be disciplined. So he hasn't fought since January of 2016 when he lost to Jamal James. A good prospect, only has one loss now. I was at Club Nokia in Los Angeles. Went 10 rounds. He said that wasn't for him. So what he did, another hand injury, Molina did, was he in his corner said 140 is where we got to be. So a few months ago, they did an entire camp training for 140. They did an actual weigh-in, and then the following Friday, they did sparring, just I like see. it was a real fight. He said he wanted to see how his body would react. He said after doing that, realizing he didn't suffer for 140, realizing he felt good the following day, sparring, ten good round. Right. He's like, I belong at 140. That's smart. And that's what he did. You don't want to find out for sure on fight night how your body's going to react the day after, that's making it. a weight that you haven't made in, in several years and not at all during his professional career. That's pretty smart. That's exactly what he said on Golden Boy Live radio show Monday through Friday on Dash, 7 to 10. And it, it, the way he sounded, he had him the day before the win, and he was lucid, he had yeah. energy, he was talking, and he came in and weighed 139.8. Dedication, huh? What a difference. Jesse Roman coming off a couple of victories at Thompson Boxing Shows in Ontario. Elena, but he was always in the gym, trains at Maywood. Is it where Charles Huerta's at? Yeah, and I saw Charles Huerta's father, yep. Mondo, in uh, Molina's corner. These two know each other very well. They know what to expect. And they know there's a lot on the line tonight. Jesse Ramon, nicknamed Mr. Incredible. He seems to have the stronger physique of the two. I'm just looking at their upper body. champion Daniel Ponce de Leon, who normally works to broadcast in Spanish for Estrella TV, took off his tie, probably took off the makeup too, and he's working the corner right now. Of course, uh, Molina has a strong corner of Maywood, he mentioned the Huerta in there. Yes, and I used to watch Daniel Ponce de Leon spar and train at the Maywood Boxing Club. And, uh, you know, obviously he was known for his punching power and his heart. Uh, and he was viewed as a, a crude slugger because he had a very awkward style. But um, he was uh, a, a Mexican Olympian. Yep. Um, had a, a decorated amateur career. And he's actually very smart. Uh, and so I, I, I have to view him as, a, as an asset in Roman's corner. Now with, with Molina, he's got... That, that upbringing of, of growing up in a, in a boxing family, being an amateur standout, he was a, a U.S. national amateur champion at age 17. So he was a precocious talent uh, before he turned professional. Yeah, there was actually a documentary on the Molina brothers, uh, Born and Bred, that was on Netflix for a while, now it's on Amazon, that followed them from the age of 14. He and his brothers they were trying to get to the Olympics this one right here, Javier, made in 2008. Walking into the ceremony in Beijing, looking around, and there's Kobe Bryant and all the other main stars yeah, around the amazing, world. What an amazing experience. He mentioned, he said he was on that team with Deontay Wilder, with Rashi Warren, Earl Spence. Guys that he knows all over the world. Having trained in Colorado Springs at the Olympic headquarters. And his bread and butter was always his skill set. It was his boxing ability, and that's the that's. I, I think I, I covered his pro debut. I think it was at the uh, the Nokia Theater. 
I could be wrong about that, but I remember watching some of his early pro bouts when he was a, a fighter for Goose and Tudor Promotions when that company was in existence, and, and thinking and he's just he's a technician. He's a, a skillful boxer. I don't. I, I my early impressions from him. I, it wasn't one of those impressions where I was um, taken with his athleticism, uh, you know, speed or power. Uh, or, you know, his uh, intensity or anything like that. He seemed like a very smart, calculating technician in there. You always wonder why guys go to the Olympics, the fanfare, and things don't work out for them. Injuries, discipline, emotions. At the end of the day, though, you can blame other people, but as he said, you got to be the, the one in the ring doing the work. You got to be the one focusing on waking up at 5 o'clock. How many Olympics or how many guys with a lot of pedigree as amateurs don't make it? Frankie Gomez. Right. I mean, we can go and name so many. Sure. Oh, Bojados. Yeah. Especially Bojado the was an Olympian. Especially at the Southern California scene. Yeah, I remember a guy named Marshall Martinez. Wow. Who was a top, top amateur. Um, and he could have. He, he was actually supposed to be on the U.S. Olympic squad. I remember that name. And he was kicked off the team for uh, forging checks or something, yes. passing around something bad like checks. That, yeah. He never panned out because he really wasn't committed to the sport. Some guys get a bonus and they don't show up. And you have other fighters like Oscar Valdez, or Joseph Diaz, Olympian too. They lock in even more as their professionals. Another good fight at the Blasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles, right there underneath that Golden Boy sign, standing room only. The next Blasco, July 6th, Oscar Negrete, the main event. Then June 23rd on ESPN, a Saturday night. Virgil Ortiz, the main event, goldenboytickets.com. Do not wait. And Roberto Diaz, Golden Boy matchmaker, Javier Razo, helping him out. They put on excellent matched cards. You get quality over quantity. The Blasco. Physically speaking, these guys um, have the same body dimensions. They're basically the same height, the same reach. Um, but just looking at their bodies, doesn't Roman seem to be the more solid of the two, or at least appear physically stronger? Just looking at his shoulders, his arms, his back, his, his thighs. You would think it would behoove him to have a more physical style. Or, or to be working his way in closer to where he can make this a more physical contest against Molina. Speaking of Olympians, 1992 gold medalist Oscar DeLoya watching on Facebook. But that's the patron. Molina needs to throw more punches. Roban needs to work the body. That's what he has after two. Got the rant, Doug Fisher. I agree with Oscar. Also, Vanessa watching at the St. Sebastian Project. It's their sports award show tonight, Doug. They got the iPad. The junior high kids are watching the boxing, even though there's a DJ. <laughs> so congratulations, everybody who won awards at the St. Sebastian Sports Project. A great job with Catholic organizations. Como siempre, saludos a nuestro buen amigo, Juan José Vitela. Está arreglando la piscina, listo para el verano. El hombre del bigote, el cantante de Durango. Watching us right now. And Ro Ruckus on the Facebook. I see you monitoring. Good job. Make sure you guys share this main event. It's the third one starting to pick up. First couple rounds, you knew it was going to be like this. They're going to fill each other out. They're going to respect each other. We have to factor in um, the inactivity of both fighters. Molina, as we've talked about, he's been out of the ring for almost two and a half years. But Roman as well has been inactive. He, his last fight was last June. Yep. So we're talking about uh, a year's worth of inactivity. They're gonna, they have to, to, to warm up gradually. But I do believe, you know, it's, it's not a 10 round bout, it's an eight rounder. I do think that Roman, who's got kind of heavy feet, is not like a, a pressure fighter or one to cut the ring off. Um, I, I think he needs to step up the, the level of aggression uh, and as well as his punch output because Molina is controlling the distance. That was a nice right hand from Ramon just there. But um, he needs to be, when he gets in range, he needs to, to punch in combination uh, because Molina is, is elusive in there. And right now, I think 
the, the ring general, the guy in control of the, 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 the tempo of the bout is Molina. And it, it's based on that jab and his footwork. We'll see him touch glove at the round. Robert Serrano, you're in Hawaii watching these fights. Aloha, mahalo, and have a couple of Mai Tais, my man. Yeah, shouts out to all the Australian fans, all the Aussies out there, great supporters of boxing. Shouts out to the Maloney brothers. Both, both have recently cracked the ring's rankings at uh, 115, 118 pounds. Appreciate everybody leaving comments on the Facebook. Let's talk about the fight, though. I mean, you want to talk about Canelo and old news? Email. Actually, you know what? You want to talk about other stuff? Go tweet Steve Kim. Steve, UCN Live. He loves it when you guys are on there. And he also loves saying, what by Ivan Mendes watching us in Puerto Rico. This one's eight rounds. There's eight rounds because there's no belt on the line. Right. So that's where we're going eight. Melina, white and black. The fourth round. I'm pretty sure, Doug, you agree they both need to step it up now? Both need to step it up, but I, I think Molina is in control with the fight um, set at this pace. I do think Ramon is throwing with, with bad intentions. He's trying to land damaging punches, but he's just not in range to do so often enough to win these rounds. And one thing that Molina has that it always served him well, going back to his amateur days, is a jab. Taller fighter, you can throw that jab. Which will, but Doug, to answer your question, you were there for his main, I mean, his first professional fight yeah. for Molina. February 27th, March 2009, back when Golden Boy used to sh do shows at the Nokia, at Club Nokia. On that card, you had Sean Estrada, speaking of Olympians. Oh, yeah. He was an Olympian who never panned out. <laughs> He's actually a personal trainer now. I see that, that guy at, at SMC track every now and then. All right. Yeah. Good John, dude. <laughs> John Molina Jr. was in that card. Yeah. Eddie Chambers. Yeah. Samuel Peter was the main event. That was the main event. Yep. Yeah, okay. that was that was a Goose and Tudor show. So it wasn't at Club Nokia. It was at the Nokia Theater, which I think is Correct. called something you know, different now. I got, I got it. Yeah. yeah. I'm confusing everything. Yeah. yeah. No, it, but but Golden Boys uh, Fight, Fight Night Club uh, also kicked off that year. It was, okay. it was that summer, as a matter of oh, fact, you, and that was at Club Nokia. Uh, it was Nokia Theater, you're right, was the big venue. Yeah. Golden Boy had Club Nokia. Right. Now, Club Nokia was a jam. Yes, it was. It was like a lot of fun. Just like the Belasco is a jam right now. See, I'm getting older if I'm confusing all my Nokias. <laughs> Do they even make phones still? <laughs> Just with the Blackberry. Less than a minute to go in the fourth round. Molina and Roman. Yo's Grimwald, yeah, we, we wild. We wild, we, we cool. Appreciate you watching us in Seattle. That is a fast jab from Molina. Seeing some nice hand speed from Molina. He's starting to warm up because he's, he's, he's throwing more one-two combinations and trying to put those punches together. I'd like to see more body work from both men. Especially from Roman, he needs to figure out ways to slow Molina down and make him less mobile. And a uh, body attack is, is a good way to go about doing that. And on the Facebook, local green goes. Anybody laughed at any of the comments you've made? Just wondering, asking for a friend. As the fourth round winding down, how do you guys have it scored on Facebook on the very unofficial scorecards? Good shot landed by Molina. Good shot right at the buzzer. Landed by Molina. I 
Give me the water. Breathe. Well, paint down low, come overhand right. Upper than right. Facebook has Molina up shutout people. So do I. I agree with Facebook. You guys are knowledgeable fans. Who's Cecil Darren? He's leaving some good comments. <laughs> I don't know, but he, he likes the shout outs though. Oh, well, he's leaving some good comments though. Yeah. Ruckus, right? I agree with you. Roman needs to start throwing or else he's just going to keep losing rounds. Rashad Good says, throwing that Zulu rear hook. What the heck is that? I haven't seen that. The Zulu, he what? says Molina Molina's going to land it. What's he saying? That's what Molina is measuring. Measuring Roman for. He's going to land it and take out Roman. Watch. Well, we'll see. Roman from Garden Grove, Mount Train Santana. He's fought at StubHub a couple times. He should turn pro back in 2009 at the Marriott Hotel in Irvine. Those were good shows. Yep. That was a long time club series promoted by Roy Engelbrecht. Yes, sir. Before him, Don Chargan. We're talking about like 30, a 30 year club show tradition in Orange County, Irvine Marriott. Warhol Week, Don Chargan? No, uh, actually Don Frazier. Oh, Don Frazier. Sorry, I, 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 that was a mistake. Yeah, Don Frazier. The legends of the sport of boxing. Yes, things done. absolutely. You hear the Molina crowd. He's bringing all the 562 Norwalk with him halfway through the fifth. Glad we're seeing a jab, a little bit, bit of a consistent jab from Ramon now. He's, he, uh, he's, he's getting in range, getting a little closer in range. When he throws that hook, he, I mean, he throws it with mean intentions. The problem is that Roman appears to be stuck in one gear. He can't shift gears to different speeds. Roman's three losses. He lost to Carlos Sanchez, who at the time was 20 and 10, the first loss. And he lost to Joaquin Chavez, who was 8 and 13. That was at Pachanga. And the other loss was to undefeated Eddie Ramirez. In 2016, where he was shut out on the cards. And those losses to the journeyman, those are red flags, I would imagine. Yeah. If you're assessing whether this young man is going to be a, a, a real prospect in the sport or not. First loss was uh, Pepe Gomez in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. It was a nice uh, right cross by Molina, but Ramon coming right back with the hook. This is maybe the best round I've seen of Jesse uh, Roman in this fight. Uh, I think I might score it for him. But he needs to get more going. He really does. Javier Molina in the white and black. Jesse Roman, black and gold, and it's been all Molina. 
for Doug Fisher and you on Facebook. Dr. Duran and the editor of Ring, actually, I'm sorry, let me get this right. The editor in chief of the Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher. There you go. When you talk about that print hard copy, you got to put the in chief there. Editor dash in dash chief, son. <laughs> Make sure you uh, get the Ring Magazine, subscribe. It is a beautiful magazine. We love it when it comes every month. The photography is excellent. The layout. Do you have the most recent issue? Yeah. The one with the, the painting of the, the two heavyweights? I didn't even open it. I saw what you pulled, but I didn't even open it. It's beautiful. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'm not saying that because I'm chilling. No, it's like legit. <laughs> Hey, we work hard. I love looking at the rankings that you guys have in there because it's, okay, who's on the fringe and who's coming up? Right. That was a nice nice right cross from Molina. The speed is definitely there. I'm not seeing the power, but maybe, you know, Ramon, he looks like a sturdy guy. He's never been knocked out before. Maybe he just has an excellent chin. It seems to be the main punch of Ramon is that hook. And he just doesn't have the, the range or the timing down for it to, to land it against Molina. I get the feeling that there's there's some, some there's some authority behind it. Yeah, the conditioning looks great on Molina. You yeah. see Roman looking tired. And he's the one who's fought most recently. Yes, he is. Yeah, just one year ago. Roman with Daniel Ponce de Leon in his corner. Is, is De Leon giving him good instructions, in your opinion? Yeah, he's telling him what to do. But when you're giving him instructions, but Roman's not doing anything. Yeah, he is He is a, a first gear fighter. <laughs> he's not like lateral movement at all. I totally bother. He, his, he's one of those guys, he has to have his feet set and his opponent right in front of him before he lets his hands go. And if you move on him, it, he, he constantly has to reset before he lets his, his hands go. And that's, uh, Out of curiosity. that's a curiosity. Yeah, that's a big limitation at the higher levels of boxing. Curiosity, and don't lie, local gringo, where are you guys watching this out of the United States? We got people from Puerto Rico checking in, obviously Mexico. But where out of the United States are you guys watching? See, right now, Ramon on the inside when they're grappling there, he needs to be working the body, or at least trying to trying to muscle Molina and wear him out. Baja California checking in. We saw a good one, the Victor Ruiz from Tijuana. And Ruiz represented. He represented Guadalajara and Tijuana. Joel Lepe. We are not comedians, but I can read in Spanish, bro. Estos comentaristas deberían ser comediantes. Now, if you want the comedy, go to Spanish. Gergi Acosta checking in from the country of Nebraska. Yeah, home state of Terrence Crawford. Yeah, but. He's going to fight in a couple weeks here. Actually, uh, next Saturday in Las Vegas against Jeff Horn. Welterweight debut with the WBO title on the line. You have Phoenix, Arizona, Ohio, Chicago. Those are. Colorado. Those are fight towns. Colorado, not so much, but the elite amateur boxers will train them in Colorado Springs. Denver. Tony Contreras checking in from Moverville. It's like the, oh, okay. the Moover. You know him, Ace of SoCal. Okay, oh, Ace. Yeah, yeah our Moover, the Mexican <laughs> Uber. Raymond Charles Jr. Sent, wait, Raymond Charles Jr., aren't you a boxer? Yeah, I think he is. Didn't you fight Earl Spence and... Yes, he Alamo did. Dome, I think. I think I rocked your fight. Vegas, Elsinore, Yuma, Arizona, where I got shut out for three different TV jobs. Where was that again? Yuma, Arizona. Their loss. <laughs> Their loss. Long time ago. I was yeah. trying to get anything. Minnesota. Molina with the crowd. Ponce, Puerto Rico. We were there. Actually, Golden Boy might be going back. Puerto Rico. Is Ponce kind of like an older city? Yeah, it's at the bottom of the island. Okay, I've never beautiful. been there. Beautiful. It was beautiful. That's where I did a fight down there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I've been, to, I've been to San Juan. Uh, I've been to Bayamon. Bayamon, yep. Yeah. Um, where, what's the other uh, major town there? Caguas. Caguas. I don't know if I've been to Caguas. 
nice. Yeah, Ponce was nice, right on the resort. It was pretty cool. Pretty, huh? Yep, that's where uh, Joshua Franco lost. I guess he's, he, he avenged, or he didn't avenge, but he got a victory tonight. He beat and stopped Isao Caranza. Opening up with Odessa, Texas, Joey Alde Jr. got the victory tonight. Yeah, Alde looks promising. Uh, Franco yeah. uh, appears to have uh, kept his form. Suffered no ill effects from that first loss. And Gramajo and Ruiz gave us the fight of the night. Yep. People are still liking El Pelon. That fight, unanimous decision in favor of Gramajo, which, thanks to a drop late in the seventh, where Ruiz got tangled up and went down. Yeah, that, that those scorecards of 76-75, uh, those yep. are fair. Those yep. are fair scorecards. You might say that the other one may be leaning a little bit towards Gramajo, but... Um, I'm okay with Gamaho winning that fight, and I would not mind seeing a rematch. I do not want to see a rematch of this no. fight right here, but I am impressed with Molina's form, given the fact that this is his first pro bout at a lighter weight class, and he's been off for two and a half years. Not too shabby, Javier. The Marine, Jamel Herring checking in. Jamel. One of my favorite followers for boxing on social media. And he had an excellent win on the undercard of Jorge Linares, Vasil Lomachenko at Madison Square Garden on May 12th. Glad to see him back in the ring. Barry Shields, nobody cares if we were on vacation. We weren't on vacation, we were working, man. And you're watching this fight. What's there to break down? Molina's dominating, Roman isn't throwing. <laughs> that's, I mean, that is, that's, yeah. that's the, the fight in, in its essence. Roman is not able to get off. Rokas, you don't work for Adidas, man. Don't act like you're a rep for them. Yeah, another way to encapsulate this match. Molina is outclassing Dude, Ramon. Seven yeah. rounds in the books and they're shaking hands out no, there. No, no, no. Like, where's the urgency for Ramon yes. right now? Fight with some urgency, man. Fight with some pride. The guy working your corner always did, no matter what. Hook and uppers. Okay. Is it Gancho and uppercut? Yeah, oh no, Gancho is hook. hook. Max and Espanol, we're doing a stream. We're evolving. It's 2018. We're not going to do your traditional broadcast, so we're not going to focus exactly on the fight. If this Wait, was is, a somebody, is somebody complaining? Oh, if they, they want more blow by blow? There's no blows landed. Yeah. Something's got to happen for us to comment on the fight. If this was a TV fight, we would be doing it completely different. Yeah. We're trying to interact with you. We're trying to have fun with you. Pero como dicen en español, siempre se están quejando todos. Always crying. <laughs> <laughs> Eighth and final round between Javier Molina, Jesse Roman. We're gonna give you nothing but play-by-play -play here for the last two. There is no, five. there is no play-by-play. -play. What we can do is, is, you know, we can comment on the form of the fighters. And Molina is showing nice boxing form. He's kind of taking it back to his amateur days because he's, he's boxing very light off his feet, working off his jab, and he's been in control for the majority of this fight. The only round that I've scored for Roman was round five. And the bottom line, and Roman, not busy enough. Not busy enough. And just, you know, there's, there's, there's not enough aggression. And the little aggression that he's shown during, you know, seven and a half rounds, uh, it has, has not been effective. Eighth and final round, the pizza has arrived. Roman, I don't know. Like, I was expecting Roman, because I've seen his, I've actually worked his last two fights at Thompson. Came out aggressive, went against it. But, but was he in against a lower level aggressive he opponent? He was against it lower level, but he was also the A side. Right. He's a B side tonight, and Javier Molina is acting like an A side fighter who has no promoter, who has no contract with anybody, and who knows that he doesn't want to become an opponent for anybody. True. I do think Molina could have taken some more chances a little more risk yes just to be a little bit more entertaining because that's a factor it's not just about the victory um, it's how you win and promoters want uh, their signees to be entertaining boxers uh, Luke Wilkes if you want to ask anything about boxing business wise uh, email Dougie mailbag and he will answer everything for you that is a professional answer for you oh, come on man 
we're talking about the fights in front of us. We're, talking, we're interacting with you guys. There's no need for business on a Friday. <laughs> Who's that? What, what business is uh, somebody asking? First of all, yeah. you guys are watching boxing on a Friday. We know you got some beers. We know you got some pizza. There's no need for business. And why are we counting other people's money? Roger Chapa, there's a pug in the lobby, dude. If go to the Golden Boy page, Emilio Sanchez brought his dog in, and I'm not—I'm really? scared of dogs. And we had a face down, me and that the, the pug. Actually, go to my Instagram, Bethel Vision. It's up there. You'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I, uh, yeah, I'm not scared. I, 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 I lost. Two-year layoff for Javier Molina, getting back into it. A lower division. Usually, guys after two years go up in weight. Molina controlled this fight from the opening bout. And thanks to everybody that watched us on the Facebook. I uh, appreciate the commentary. appreciate you guys sharing. The next uh, Ring TV live show will be July 6th at the Velasco Theater. And Oscar Negrete will be the main event. El Colombiano will come on through. The, Alta. the next Golden Boy on ESPN, June 8th. A traditional TV broadcast for you. Diego De Loya, the main event on ESPN on Hall of Fame weekend at Turning Stone Resort Casino in Verona. And then June 23rd at the Velasco ESPN. GoldenBoyTickets.com is where you want to go right now and get those tickets. The main event, Hot Shot Phenom, Virgil Ortiz with a record of 10 and 0 will be taking on a former world champion. Yeah, I, as a matter of fact, I think Virgil is 9 and 0. I think, nine? I think he's 9 and 0 and this is his 10th pro bout against Salgado, who is a seasoned, well-traveled veteran from Mexico, a guy who's been in there with Jorge Linares. Sure, I dug and, 9 -0. Yeah, um, some, of the, some of the top Japanese fighters, 130-pounders he's been in with. Arjenis Mendez, I believe Salgado's been in with. He's a tall and rangy dude, just like Virgil Ortiz. And Virgil Ortiz, as Oscar DeLoya said, at Cowboy Stadium before Virgil's pro debut, this is a kid who will be a world champion. That could be will be and that's not hyperbole that is the real talk and you've seen him he's now with uh, robert garcia training him and also that night june 23rd at the belasco on espn the golden boy tickets you'll see hector tanahara and Benito will be the co-feature against venezuela's roger gutierrez oh yeah just a once beaten guy yep. he uh, actually lost for the first time on an L.A. Fight Club yep. show uh, against uh, Rene Alvarado. Yes, he did. A very dangerous gatekeeper, yes. And then also Armenia, Fred and I, Karobian, on the card. That kid's a badass. We have the decision of the judges. After eight rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges have the same scores of 79 to 73. Los tres jueces, Carla Kais, Rudy Barragan, and Jerry Cantu, coinciden en sus tarjetas. 79 a 73. Por lo tanto, su ganador por la vía de la decisión unánime. Your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision. Javier Molina. First time finals in 2016. It's his 18th victory. Sweeps the cards against Jesse Roman, who falls at 22 and four. Good scorecards. I saw it the same way. Just one round from Roman, so. Molina just missed the, the shutout decision, but I, you know, I like his form. I like the speed. Uh, I, I like the boxing acumen that he showed off. There were some combinations, not, not as many as I'd like to see. Uh, but I, I think this was kind of a, a round about just getting back to his form, testing the waters a little further at 140 pounds, and just knocking off ring rust, which he did. And the reflexes were there. 140 pounds. Oh, the boy got some guys at 140. And Molina back against him. As a Norwalk kid. Did a good job representing the 5-6-2. Card tonight, Joey Ade Jr. got the victory, unanimous decision. Joshua Franco, a TPO stoppage of himself, can have the fifth, he's now 14 and one. Rafael Gramajo eked out a victory over Victor Ruiz. Gramajo 10, one and two at a West Side Boxing. End of the main event, Javier Molina. Decision, Jesse Roman. Molina now 18 and two. Roman falls to 22 and 
four. Thanks to everybody that watched on the Facebook on ringtv.com and all over the world, wherever you're at. The next Pulaska will be July 6th. Oscar Negrete will be the main event. And the next Golden Boy on ESPN, June 8th at Verona, Diego the Lawyer, the main event. And do not hesitate, do not wait. June 23rd, right there in that ring, Virgil Ortiz representing Grand Prairie, Texas, and the Dallas area will be the main event. 9 0 going up as the main event against the former world champion, Sal Goddard. Well, should be a good one. The Santa Monica Pier is still open. Joshua Franco, the victory. Oh, another good show from the Belasco Theater. If you never had a chance to check out a club show, this is the one.